naughty novel. What do you call them? Smut, spice, erotica? They have been enormously popular in the last few years. But this isn't a new thing. Throughout the history of literature there have always been salacious and scandalous books that had to be banned, sold from under the counter, which even made them more popular. So that's what we're doing today. We're going on a journey through the history of smut and look at six books that were so steamy they caused an absolute scandal. We start our journey all the way back in the 18th century. Now the novel as we know it today was still a brand new thing. The literary elites of the day uh, thought nothing of it. They proclaimed it wasn't really reading and if you wanted to be a reader you had to read poetry. This meant that these early novelists could get away with much more than their counterparts in later centuries. With barely any social control, no oversight and no censorship, these early novels were quite salacious. And an excellent example of this is Fanny Hill by John Cleland. And yes, I know what's in the title. Fanny Hill was subtitled The Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure. And it is exactly that. And I do love the story behind this novel. John Cleland was a bit of a jack of all trades, a master of none and he found himself in debt. He ended up in prison and he found it was quite boring. He felt all kinds of frustrations and decided he was going to write a book. And there is a lot to tell about this book. First of all, it is one of the earliest known examples of erotica or a steamy novel in English literature. It is the story of a young woman called Fanny. Her parents die early and as a way to survive she has to adopt the way of life of a woman of pleasure. Now for that day and age this book is enormously explicit. While there wasn't a reaction by the government in the first few years, after a while this book started to ruffle some feathers. And because Cleland was still in prison, they went after the publishers. This trial did not only force the book into the black market, but it also gave the book a lot of public interest. And for the next 300 years or so, this book would be one of the most banned and sought after books in English literature. It was an absolute scandal and people loved it. Every few years or so new editions started to surface, some were even illustrated. Fanny Hill, The Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure by John Cleland is possibly one of the most prohibited and hunted books in English literature ever. But it isn't the only one. Now for the next book we go all the way up to the Victorian age. And this book caused a right scandal in Victorian England. And the funny thing is, you probably have it on your shelf. Bram Stoker's Dracula is Probably not a book that you would think about if we talk about salacious and steamy novels. Today we see it as an excellent example of gothic literature, but it is quite meek to our modern taste. But not so in the Victorian age. You see, vampires have been a sexual thing way longer than Twilight. And this book was seen as the work of the devil. The vampire was a symbol of everything that wasn't Victorian England. It was exotic, mysterious, seducing. It tapped into emotions and urges and feelings that were clearly non-Victorian. While it was never really banned, it surely caused a scandal. I do get it. If you own a copy of Bram Stoker's Dracula, do search for that one scene where Jonathan Harker is visited by the brides. If you take a closer look at that particular scene, and no, I'm not going to read it here because that would get me in all kinds of trouble, you'll get why Bram Stoker's Dracula was certainly seen as a naughty novel. Now, while the Victorian Brits were getting their panties in a twist across the channel in France, one of the probably most important books in Western literary history was being written. And it was a naughty one. French writer Gustave Flaubert wrote Madame Bovary. Now Madame Bovary was a book about a doctor's wife. Being from a well-off, wealthy middle-class family, she had everything her heart could desire. And while money wasn't the issue, she was bored. And to fill that bottomless pit, there was always adultery. Now while this book wasn't the first about extramarital relationships, the thing is that Flaubert's inspired a whole new literary tradition being realism. He wanted to portray everything in his book as realistic as possible. 
which led to several trials for obscenities. The French government had to step in. The book was banned and Flaubert was put on trial. It was seen as obscene, overtly sexual and undermining the traditional values of a family because it glorified adultery and would suggest that all middle class women were loose women in fact. Today however there is something to say about Emma's or Madame Bovary's desires. It depicts the sexual act as something that can be enjoyed by both sexes, even without the notion of love. Flaubert was a realist, he wanted to portray society as he saw it. A society in which women were treated with different standards and were often caught in a loveless marriage, a sort of prison. As a realist, he wanted to show a society that wasn't without its flaws. And society wasn't having any of this. And with the next book we enter the 20th century. And this book was so scandalous that it was prohibited in the UK, Canada, America, Japan, India. It had to be published in Italy and then later in France. And you couldn't get your hands on a legal unabridged copy in the UK until the 1960s. It was in 1960 that Penguin Publishing won a trial against the British government for the rights to publish this novel and quickly sold 3 million copies of it. This scandalous, steamy and saucy novel is of course Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. Lady Chatterley's Lover is the story about a woman, formerly Constance Reed, nowadays Lady Chatterley. Her husband, who was grievously wounded in the war, is paralyzed from the waist down and their marriage is a loveless one. He has become a terrible bully towards her and she denies him the pleasure of a physical relationship. Both characters are enormously frustrated and they have to find a way out of these frustrations. And for Lady Chatterley this is an affair with her groundskeeper slash master of the hunt. And this is a book of juxtapositions. It is a book about upper class, lower class, body and mind, industrialization and nature. D. H. Lawrence was inspired by actual going ons in upper society. He explored sexuality as a physical thing, not a thing of romance. He explored the idea that there are many forms of relationships. Physical, intellectual, a marriage, but also more loosely sexual encounters. And proper society wasn't having any of this. Just like Fanny Hill, this book became one of the most banned books in English literature. This book is even credited that when it was finally available in the uncensored, unabridged version in the United States, it was one of the main triggers for the sexual revolution and the summer of love. It inspired poets, bands like the Beatles, it was everywhere. And perhaps most importantly, the 1960 Penguin Books lawsuit opened up the way for a more open and uncensored novel. So things were about to get pretty steamy. We are now in the 1930s and we are far from the literary free speech that we know today. But there is a married couple that is about to change this. First of all, there is Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller. This book is believed to be some kind of autobiography and it centers on the life of a struggling writer. Henry Lee explores a life of loneliness, despair, homelessness, hunger, but also sexual frustration and it gets quite graphic. It is a book about the human condition and it caused an absolute scandal. This book immediately got tangled in all kinds of lawsuits. It was banned by American customs and had to be smuggled illegally into the country, often via Mexico. In 1961, there were over 60 lawsuits against booksellers that actually dared to sell this book in over 21 states in America. And it would take until 1964, which is 30 years after its first publication, that finally US Supreme Court ruled that this book was not obscene. Now one of the themes in Henry Miller's book is the despair that he feels after his recent separation from his wife. And while in many cases this might be just another footnote in literary history, but not in the case of Anaïs Nin. Anaïs Nin was a French Cuban author who was the wife of Henry Miller. She helped him edit Tropic of Cancer and she herself was no stranger to the art of erotica. Now Anaïs Nin herself had a very traumatic lifetime. 
She struggled with her sexual identity all throughout her life and had some very terrible and disastrous relationships. And this is no doubt why her diaries are often more popular than her works of erotica. Her best known books are probably Delta of Venus and Little Birds, a collection of short stories and poetry all about love and sexual relationships. And in all honesty, they are much meeker than her actual diaries. Now the importance of Anna Isnin is twofold. Finally, for the first time, we get a female voice in this whole erotica discussion. It is no longer men who are writing about the fantasies of women, but we finally get a female voice openly fantasizing. And this is the absolute strength of Anais Nin. A lot of men have problems writing women and a lot of women have problems writing men, but not in this case. In her short stories, she shows she has an excellent understanding of both sexes and their desires and their views upon sexual relationships. If you are new to Anna Isnin and you want to explore her works, I highly recommend The Veiled Woman. The Veiled Woman is a collection, sort of best of, of four short stories from uh, both The Delta of Venus and Little Birds and explores all kinds of her writing. It is possibly one of the best gateways into her work and life and after that you can go on with her diaries and even the excellent graphic novel On the Sea of Lies by Leono Bischoff. Yet again, her life was quite disastrous, so do read your trigger warnings. And these are six of the books that have cleared the way for all of the naughty novels that we have today. So do tell me, have you read any of these novels? Are you a fan of modern naughty novels or do you steer clear of them? Let me know down below in the comments and we'll talk naughty books some more. Thank you for watching, hope you liked this video and if you need some less salacious but good book recommendations, then by all means, check out this video.